Hello, this is John Hope Bryant. I'm the founder, chairman, and chief executive officer of Operation Hope. I'm also the chairman of the subcommittee of the underserved and community empowerment for the President's Council on Financial Capability for President Barack Obama. Today I am talking to educators, to principals, uh, to the magic makers in public schools. And uh, my mission is real simple, to give you a very good reason why you should want to operationalize Hope Business in a Box in your school, why this makes life easier for you, why it um, will juice your educational in, uh, experience in, in, uh, in your classroom, no matter how brilliant you are. Uh, I would argue that there's a disconnect right now between education and aspiration all across America that uh, no different than you and I don't want a mortgage, we want to become a homeowner, that you and I don't want a car loan, we want a cool car, that these kids uh, want to be unfortunately successful, uh, rich, and famous. That's what they want. Um, and um, they're looking at a bunch of uh, distractions and images of so-called success and beginning to mirror that. And uh, Quincy Jones, one of my mentors, says it takes 20 years to change a culture. In the last 20 years, we've made dumb sexy. We've dumbed down and celebrated it as a nation. And we've got to make smart sexy again. I don't think you can do that by yourself. I say that very respectfully. You're doing a fantastic job. I was raised in public school. Thank God for you, for, for you and public schools. Uh, uh, but when I was in school in Compton, California, I had a home economics course. They, those don't exist anymore. And I had a volunteer banker come in my classroom, red tie, white shirt, blue suit. I remember it as if, as if it was yesterday. Happened to be a Caucasian banker. Didn't matter uh, what his race was. He was interested in me, and he was unpacking for me the language of money. He, he, he began to frame out the vision for free enterprise and capitalism in a, in a common sense conversation in a way that got the endorphins firing in the right side of my brain. And I start dreaming about who I can be and what I can do. And I remember asking the guy, what do you do for a living? And how do you get rich legally? <laughs> and I was dead serious. I had never seen this before or heard about this before. And and uh, I'm now convinced that we're living in an economic age. If you don't understand the global language of money today and you don't have a bank account, you're an economic slave, period, full stop. But that's the risk management portion. I'm not talking about the aspirational portion, which is a different portion. So financial literacy is about risk management. Operational pioneered financial literacy uh, as, a, as a policy in America in 2008 when we got then-President Bush to sign an executive order making financial literacy federal policy. Now we're rejecting our own approach saying that you cannot be just left brain only. You cannot be analytical in your approach when you're dealing with poor kids, poor in spirit, kids who are depressed, dejected, distressed, stressed out, uh, underwhelmed, lacking a level of hope, um, and lacking positive role models. You've got to be aspirational first. You've got to go right brain, left brain, uh, dealing with their hope, their engagement, their well-being, a sense of their opportunity, and reconnecting education and aspiration we think is a way that gets them excited about your classroom. And we think that your your drop your high school graduation rates will go right through uh, the roof. The minute that that kid thinks that that schoolhouse is a powertrain to a job or an economic opportunity, all bets are on. So private schools have a lot of advantages on public schools, mostly resource-based, but also role modeling-based. And the numbers, you know the numbers, and numbers in private schools tend to be much more impressive. There's smaller classrooms, there's more resources, there's, you know, graduations are, rates are all up, 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 blah, blah, blah. So essentially, what, because of a partnership with Gallup, a 100-year partnership with Gallup, where they're giving us free uh, uh, youth economic energy technology software to plug into every school in America through their student poll and the Gallup Hope Index, uh, and then operational bringing in our intervention strategy of Hope Business in a Box, Thanks to Gallup, we're able to juice every school house in America, basically take a private school resource platform and put it right on top of your public school house without changing one iota of your mission. And you don't even have to pay for it. Uh, so uh, we're raising the resources privately in most cases. And so uh, the net result of this is you get a transformational experience. The kid gets a role model. When I was 10, the banker came in my classroom 
I, I saw him wear a suit. I wanted to wear a suit. I, f I finally didn't recognize my daddy was wearing suits uh, twice a week, making payroll as a small business owner. Uh, and I wanted to be like them, so I started wearing suits. And uh, I went to go work at a liquor store down the corner of my house. Unfortunately, they sold liquor, so liquor store sold candy. And uh, learned how to buy, buy wholesale and sell, sell retail. And then I quit after three weeks when I figured it out. Opened the neighborhood candy house in my den. Op made $300 a week on a $40 investment for my mother. Um, who went to the Irish food store with me, the place where the guy... Uh, who owned the liquor store, bought us candy. I knew because it, it was on the side of the box, Iris Food Store. Uh, made $300 a week, made a fortune for a kid, found girls, lost the business. That's a whole other story of my life. But I was hooked. I was hooked on aspiration. I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur that very moment. So uh, we want to spark a generation of entrepreneurs and small business owners and self-employment projects. But even if the kids go through Hope Business in a Box, uh, they get their chance to start a business for one of these 25 businesses for $500 or less, they get the grant, they get a um, business role model assigned to them, they open a bank account, blah, blah, blah. They go through all this, they get a pitch, um, their business idea for two minutes in front of local business leaders on your stage at your auditorium, think Shark Tank for kids. They go through a course in Dignity, which is sort of a character course. Um, they, they get to a primary, a primary entrepreneurship, a little entrepreneurship course, I mean, a financial literacy course. They do all that. They don't want to be an entrepreneur for that. They are they, you know, that's fine. But they're immune to failure. They've got a they've, they've got a dose of hope. They've been listened to uh, by adults and outsiders, and they've got a role model or role models that they know what success looks like in a way that is aspirationally based. Uh, and uh, education is now relevant to them in a different way, and they're now juiced on and invested in saving their own lives, and they've got their hope back, and we think that changes the whole game. So basically, in short, taking a private schoolhouse uh, resource mix platform and putting it on top of your public schoolhouse uh, character uh, and, and, um, and, and ethics and values platform and and having uh, having a, a strategy I think that's designed to win is basically what we're about, and we're able to do this for about six thousand dollars per schoolhouse. I'm going to raise the money uh, for that, most of it privately. Um, but I want you to know why I think this is so important, and how we think this will double the level of financial literacy per schoolhouse, double the level of economic energy per schoolhouse, and quadruple the level of business role models. And if you do that, you you, you just crush the dropout rate. Because all a kid wants, as I said earlier, is a shot at, at an economic opportunity or a good job. So the Gallup Hope Index uh, is transformational. The numbers are impressive. The first year is uh, a couple of the numbers I think are useful before I wrap up. 91% um, of all kids uh, are not afraid to take risk. 77% uh, of all kids want to be their own boss. 44% of all kids want to create something that will change the world. Believe they will, I'm sorry, believe they will create something that changes the world. Think Twitter, Facebook, etc. These were all young people who did this, by the way. And 44% of all kids want to own their own business. 44%. But only 5% of kids have a business role model or a business internship. And then separate from that, the, the, book, the, the book The Tipping Point, Malcolm Gladwell, scientifically proved through a University of Illinois study that if 5% of role models every community stabilizes... So there you go. If we can get the role model level to 5% in underserved communities, the community stabilizes. Then we change the culture, change the values, change the motivation, and you change the trajectory. And all of a sudden, well-being goes up, hope um, goes up, self-esteem goes up, engagement goes up. Kids want to graduate and go to school because it's connected to their, to their, their aspiration, their hope in life, and their future uh, prosperity. So I think we are helping you make education relevant. We're helping you do your job, and uh, we're partners with you in the, the kids' progress. And I look forward to seeing you in the classroom. Uh, and special thanks to Gallup. We're going to change the world, and we're going to make America great again. Um, and this is your legacy, and we're honored to be a, play a small part in it. Thank you very much.